Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutali Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani Namaste Saraswati Deve Gurabani Pacharni Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paska Chade Satarani Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pramuntyananda Sri Adaita Gadadhar Srivasati Govakta Minda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. This 34th chapter, uh, sloka of the 13th chapter of the 7th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam is very important. Here Prabhupada clearly distinguishes between human society and subhuman society, or the modern so-called advanced civilization and demonic civilization. The modern so-called demonic civilization and Vedic civilization. Scripture tells us that there are 400,000 species of human life. Most are uncivilized. And here we are instructed if we are actually intelligent we should avoid the causes of lamentation, illusion, fear, anger, attachment, poverty, and unnecessary labor. Intelligence does not mean having a big degree from a university or any kind of book knowledge. Intelligence is the ability to distinguish matter from spirit. And therefore, the author here says, the original cause of all of these, referring to the lamentation, illusion, fear, anger, attachment, poverty, and unnecessary labor, is the desire for unnecessary prestige and money. All, both of these are of the mode of ignorance because they originate in the false ego the ego that says, I am this body. Unnecessary prestige means the desire for power, the desire for fame, the desire for adoration. And money is the symbol of sense gratification. People earn money, they work very hard, performing unnecessary labor simply because they desire sense gratification. Krishna advises that we should have plain living and high thinking, not high thinking and low living. I meant to say plain living, high thinking, not high living and low thinking. The modern world, especially where I come from, they're all engaged in low living or low thinking and high living. They work very hard, sometimes in two or three jobs a day, just to accumulate money for more comfort. So we should know what is the original cause of all material miseries and what is the cause of spiritual satisfaction. Here it's describing the original cause of all material miseries, namely the desire for sense gratification. The original cause of spiritual bliss, Krishna tells us, is surrender to him. Krishna tells Arjuna, O oh Arjuna, surrender to me utterly. By my grace you will enjoy peace, wealth, and victory. Krishna is not a poor man, he's not a weak man, he's not far away, he is within our hearts and with full power. He can empower his devotee to do anything. So he's also, he's also empowering the materialists, the demons, to work very hard and accumulate Money for sense gratification. He says in the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, I am in everyone's heart for helpfulness. 
granting knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. Ma we cannot even forget Krishna without his empowerment. So why does he empower one to forget him and another to remember him? He says, I am supplying everyone's desire since time immemorial. You have not because you desire not. We are by nature servants of Krishna. But when we try to use that nature of servitude for, for this body, we become entangled in the laws of material nature. We are subjected by the laws of nature to three kinds of weapons, or whip, whip, whips, or distresses. The distress of one's own body and mind, the distress of other people, and distresses inflicted by the demigods. This is all due to a misuse of our little independence. No one is free. No one is without servitude to someone. Either we are servants of Krishna or we're servants of Maya. We may choose which master we want to obey. We may choose to obey Krishna and become Krishna conscious. Or we may choose to obey Maya. But when we choose to serve Maya, we become more and more animal-like. Simply eating, sleeping, defending, and mating. The uniqueness of the human form is its developed consciousness. That developed consciousness is not meant to be wasted on economic advancement. That highly developed consciousness is meant for high thinking, for thinking on self-realization, who I am and what is my duty. We are always servant, but the question is who are we serving? Serving this body and the extensions of this body, children, wife, home, and this is all Maya. But don't misunderstand me. I'm not against marriage and family life. Krishna consciousness does not teach that one cannot get married. But it does teach that one should marry a, a mate of similar Krishna consciousness. And that the home should have Krishna in the center. When we keep Krishna in the center, and rise early to uh, chant his holy name and sing his glories, visit Krishna's temple and hear katha about Krishna, and relish only Krishna Pasadam, then we are on the way to perfect life. That is keeping Krishna in the center. Krishna does not mean for us to be miserable or with, without the necessities of life. He tells Arjuna, when you surrender to me, I'll supply peace, wealth, and victory. This peace, wealth, and victory does not come by hard work, hard endeavor. It does not come by a clever mind or any other material thing. It comes by the grace of Krishna. And we become fit receptacles for receiving his grace when we surrender to him. Thank you very much.